you're terrific If you're even good Where anyone at all We interrupt this program to bring you a special bulletin from ABC Radio. Here is a special bulletin from Dallas, Texas. Three shots were fired at President Kennedy's motorcade today in downtown Dallas, Texas. This is ABC Radio. To repeat, in Dallas, Texas... Three shots were fired at President Kennedy's motorcade today. The president now making a two-day speaking tour of Texas. We're going to stand by for more details on the incident in Dallas. Stay tuned to your ABC station for further details. Now we return you to your regular program. We interrupt this program for another bulletin from ABC Radio. Here is a bulletin from ABC Radio. More on the shots fired at President Kennedy's motorcade today in downtown uh, Dallas. No casualties have been reported in the first bulletin. However, there is a later bulletin that says there is perhaps a serious injury. The incident occurred near the county sheriff's office on Main Street, just east of an underpass leading toward the trademark where the president was to make an address. Uh, Don, let's stand by. Let's keep all the nets on the, uh, all the stations on the line. We feel that we have an important news bulletin here, and there are details coming in. All stations, stand by. It is believed now that, uh, Don, you better read this. All right, right. Ladies and gentlemen... To add to this bulletin from Dallas, Texas, there is a possibility that the president, Mr. John F. Kennedy, has been seriously wounded. Now, we ask your attention to stand by on this bulletin. We ask your attention to stand by on this bulletin. Stand by on this bulletin from Dallas, Texas. Here is some more information that is just coming in. This is from the Associated Press. It says President Kennedy was shot today just as his motorcade left downtown Dallas. Mrs. Kennedy jumped up and grabbed Mr. Kennedy. She cried, oh no, the motorcade then sped on. Now that's the bulletin that is just received by ABC in New York from Dallas. Word from the Associated Press that the President, Mr. Kennedy, was shot in the motorcade in Dallas and that Mrs. Kennedy jumped up, grabbed her husband and cried, Oh no, the motorcade then sped on. The incident occurred right near the county sheriff's office on Main Street, near an underpass leading toward the trademark where Mr. Kennedy was to have made an appearance. And from the United Press, President Kennedy and Governor John Connolly of Texas were cut down by an assassin's bullet, assassin's bullets, as they toured downtown Dallas. They were traveling in an open automobile. Now, the UPI story, United Press International, says that both President Kennedy and Texas Governor John Connolly were hit by the bullets today in Dallas. An Associated Press photographer, James Altkin, says that he saw blood on the president's head. Altkin said that he heard two shots but thought someone was shooting fireworks until he saw the blood on the president. The AP photographer said that he saw no one with a gun at that moment. All right, Don. Now, Nick George, uh, New York editor for ABC. Don, just an advisory. We're staying on the air as uh, long as we need to. We have our reporter in Dallas, Bob Clark. He was immediately behind the president's automobile. We have Bob Clark on the telephone. We will switch immediately to Bob Clark, ABC in Dallas. And critically wounded, perhaps fatally, by an assassin's bullet. Three shots were fired at the president's motorcade as it passed out of the downtown area uh, of Dallas. The Secret Service uh, immediately gave orders for the procession to speed uh, out of the crowd and took the president directly to Parkland Memorial Hospital. I am at the hospital now. The president was taken in 
uh, a few minutes ago, lifted from the car, uh, placed on a stretcher. He was motionless. The first lady leaned over him, crying. Lyndon Johnson also appears to have been struck by one of the uh, bullets, so he was able to walk into the hospital. Governor Connolly of Texas was also wounded. It's uncertain at this moment how seriously. There is no word yet from uh, the surgical groom of the hospital as to uh, Mr. Kennedy's condition. That's a late report from Bob Clark, the ABC correspondent in uh, in Dallas. Here's a late report from United Press International. It says that the president, his limp body cradled in the arms of his wife, rushed into Parkland Hospital. The governor of Texas, John Connolly, also taken to Parkland. And Clint Hill, a Secret Service agent assigned to Mrs. Kennedy, said, and I quote, He is dead. That is what Clint Hill a Secret Service agent assigned to Mrs. Prented, uh, Mrs. Kennedy said today, he is dead. Ladies and gentlemen, let us take a moment to repeat the bulletins that have been coming in so rapidly to the ABC newsroom in New York from Dallas, Texas. President Kennedy and Texas Governor John Connolly were cut down by assassins' bullets as they toured downtown Dallas today in the president's famous bubble-top limousine. ABC's correspondent Bob Clark has just reported from Dallas that he saw the president being lifted and placed aboard a stretcher taken into the Parkland Hospital in Dallas, Texas. Uh, Don, uh, Bob Clark is still on the phone. He has additional details from Dallas. We switch now to ABC's Bob Clark in Dallas, Texas. In a press pool car, just three or four automobiles behind the presidential car in the motorcade when three shots suddenly rang out from the crowd. The motorcade had just passed out of downtown Dallas and was moving through an area of smaller crowds when the shots were suddenly fired. The Secret Service uh, immediately sped up the motorcade and took the critically wounded president directly to Parkland Memorial Hospital some three or four miles away. I stood within a few feet as the president was lifted out of the open limousine, placed on a stretcher, and taken into the hospital. It was uncertain at this moment whether or not Mr. Kennedy was dead, but he was motionless. The first lady hovered over him as he was placed aboard the uh, stretcher and went into the hospital with him. There was no indication that Mrs. Kennedy was hurt. Lyndon Johnson, the vice president, however, also appeared to be slightly injured. He walked into the hospital, but holding one arm as if he had also been hit by one of the bullets. Governor Connolly of Texas was also wounded. There, there is no immediate word as to how critically. The governor was sitting in the front seat of the open limousine, the president and Mrs. Kennedy in the uh, rear seat. There is no immediate word from the hospital as to the condition of any of the others in the party. There is, has been no word yet from the Secret Service as to who may have fired the shots. You've been listening to ABC's correspondent Bob Clark reporting from Dallas, Texas. Let me repeat that we have only this word. It is not an official word, but a Secret Service agent who was assigned to Mrs. Kennedy, his name is Clint Hill, said to Mrs. Kennedy, he is dead. This is a report from United Press International. That is the only word we have on the state of the president at this very moment, other than the fact that he definitely is injured. He was taken to Parkland Medical Center in Dallas, Texas. In addition, Vice President Johnson, as Bob Clark just reported, he walked into the hospital. He was holding an arm as though he appeared to have been injured too. Texas Governor John Connolly also was injured as the assassin's bullets tore into the president's bubble top limousine in Dallas today. Apparently there were several shots fired, as Bob Clark reported. He heard three shots he was traveling in the motorcade just a couple of cars 
behind the president's limousine as they went through downtown Dallas. Mrs. Kennedy, as the action occurred, jumped up in the limousine, grabbed her husband, and then cried, Oh, no! The Secret Service immediately gave word for the motorcade to pick up speed and head immediately to the Parkland Hospital in Dallas. Uh, Don, we might add here that the uh, 155 news, of course, will not be heard. We will stay continuously on the air. We will not leave the air until, uh, until we have definite word of the circumstances in Dallas. This is ABC Radio News in New York, bringing you the news that shots were fired at President Kennedy and President Kennedy's party in Dallas just a short while ago. It is believed that the president is at least critically wounded. One report has it that the president was fatally wounded. However, that is not official at this moment. I'll give you back to Don Gardner. We can give you this description of what took place down there in Dallas, Texas today. Three shots rang out. They were fired at the president's bubble top limousine. President Kennedy, Texas Governor John Connolly, and Vice President Lyndon Johnson traveling in that automobile along with Mrs. Kennedy. After the shots rang out, Mrs. Kennedy jumped up, grabbed her husband, cried, Oh, no. Immediately, the Secret Service gave orders for the mo president's motorcade to take off and speed up and go directly to a medical hospital. And uh, at the hospital, pandemonium broke out in the corridors. Uh, reporters just about five lengths behind the chief executive's car and Bob uh, Clark of ABC staff traveling with the president was in one of those car. They said that it sounded like a horrible burst of gunfire. Immediately, Secret Service agents pulled out their pistols and rifles and... Uh, uh, took uh, all of the precautions that were necessary. And now we have additional word from Bob Clark. Here he is in Dallas, Texas. The presidential motorcade had just passed through heavy crowds in downtown Dallas and was circling through the fringes of the business district when three shots suddenly rang out somewhere in the crowd. It was impossible to see from three or four automobiles back in the motorcade where I was riding with a press pool impossible to see immediately what had happened. But the Secret Service pulled out a machine gun and then gave the orders that sped the motorcade at some 60 miles an hour directly to Parkland Memorial Hospital, about three or four miles away. There was no panic uh, but shock and, of course, grief by other members of the party who knew were close enough to see what had happened. When the motorcade reached the hospital, the uh, few reporters riding in the pool leaped out, raced immediately to the side of the president's open limousine. He was riding in one of the White House Cadillac limousines that is uh, carried across the country, uh, used for parades and other presidential uh, processions. The president was lying in the back seat of the limousine, his head cradled in the first lady's lap. At this stage, there was no official word as to whether Mr. Kennedy was still alive, but he lay motionless on the back seat of the car for some two minutes while a stretcher was wheeled out from the hospital. The, president's, the president was lifted out of the car, placed gently on the st uh, stretcher, and wheeled immediately into the surgical area of the hospital. The first lady followed uh, holding him uh, with one hand, uh, followed the uh, other members of the party into the hospital. It appeared at this stage that Vice President Lyndon Johnson might also have been struck, though he was riding in a car uh, behind uh, the president. He walked into the hospital, but holding one arm as if he might have been hit by one of the three bullets. Governor Connolly of Texas was also wounded, seriously, but there is no immediate word as to uh, his condition. The governor uh, lay half stretched out in the front seat of the presidential limousine. He had ridden through uh, the crowds uh, in the presidential procession. Mr. Kennedy had flown from Fort Worth to Dallas uh, and then entered the motorcade at Love Field in Dallas. The um, crowds in, uh, along the streets going into Dallas and in the downtown area 
were extremely large and extremely friendly. A White House press aide riding in the press pool car noted repeatedly the absence of antagonistic signs. There were very few Goldwater signs. Uh, I noted one hand-lettered sign uh, held by uh, a young man which said, I hold John F. Kennedy in utter contempt, but that was only uh, that was almost the only sign in the crowd that indicated uh, any bitterness toward uh, the Kennedy party. The shots rang out uh, as the motorcade uh, had entered an open area just beyond uh, the main downtown business district. It was impossible to determine where the shots had come from. The immediate interest of the Secret Service, of course, was in protecting uh, the president at that stage. Uh, while some Secret Service men must have peeled off to try to track down the assassin, the main group of Secret Service men traveling with the president sped on with him to the hospital. Now, this is Don Gardner back in New York. You've just been listening to Bob Clark, ABC's man on the scene, traveling with the presidential party in Dallas, Texas, to repeat once again... President Kennedy and Texas Governor John Connolly were shot from ambush today in a motorcade in Dallas, Texas. It is not known whether either was killed. It is not known whether either was killed. Now, Mr. P Kennedy apparently was shot in the head. He fell face down in the back seat of the car. Blood was on his head. Mrs. Kennedy, who rushed to his assistance, cried, Oh, no, tried to hold up his head. Mr. Connolly, Governor Connolly, he remained half-seated. He slumped a little bit to the left. There was blood on his face and on his forehead. The president of the governor then rushed immediately by the Secret Service motorcade to Parkland Hospital near the Dallas Trademark. That's just uh, a little way away from where Mr. Kennedy was to have made a speech today. Now, this scene, described by Associated Press reporter Jack Bell, he asked Kenneth O'Donnell, a presidential assistant, if Mr. Kennedy was dead, O'Donnell gave no answer. Mr. Kennedy is now at the Parkland Hospital. Uh, Jack Bell said that Mr. Kennedy was transferred to an ambulance there after he had been wounded in the motorcade. The, the top of the president's limousine, the bubble top limousine, was down at the time. It had been raining in Dallas, and the shots were fired right through the bubble top limousine. Also in that car with President and Mrs. Kennedy were Vice President and Mrs. Lyndon Johnson and Texas Governor Connolly. Lyndon Johnson, as Bob Clark reported just a few moments ago, seemed to have had some kind of a wound. where He walked into the hospital but was holding his arm, one of his arms, as he strolled in as though he might have possibly have been wounded in the assassination. The President had landed only a short time before at the Dallas Love Airport. He was driving to the trademark in Dallas. He would de it was scheduled to deliver a luncheon speech sponsored by three Dallas organizations. The largest turnout of the current Texas tour was on the streets to greet Mr. Kennedy. The police said that it was in the number of about 250,000 people who had turned out. And just a little while ago, the acting White House secretary traveling with the presidential party, Malcolm Kildeff, when asked about the president's condition, simply said, I have no word now. Let me repeat, this is the only bulletin information that we have that is true. President Kennedy and Texas Governor John Cow uh, Connolly were shot in the motorcade in Dallas, to Dex in Dallas, Texas today from ambush. It is not known, I repeat, it is not known whether either was killed. Might point out, Don, that Bob Clark, who is at Parkland Hospital in Dallas, reports that the president apparently has been critically injured at the very least. Bob Clark is at the hospital and will have a report on the president's condition just as soon as it's made available. The Secret Service agents were right in the car immediately following the president's limousine. They quickly pulled out their automatic rifles. It is not known, however, if they returned any fire, nor if anyone has been apprehended for the ambush shooting. Now, also at the Dallas hospital, Rear Admiral George Berkeley, the White House doctor, rushed there. He headed for the emergency room where the President and Governor Connolly were taken. 
The motorcade was so strung out as a result of the Secret Service departure from the speen, uh, scene of the shooting that members of the Kennedy staff were anywhere from 15 minutes to a half hour behind in trying to reach the hospital. And also this word from Dallas, Texas, Representative Albert Thomas says that he was informed President Kennedy and Governor Connolly of Texas were still both alive after having been shot in an assassination attempt. Don, let me get this in. Bob Clark has just reported from Parkland Hospital in Dallas that the president is still alive, although obviously and almost for certain he's very critically ill. But Bob Clark reports that President Kennedy is still alive after having been shot. Yes, and Representative Albert Thomas of Texas, uh, Congressman Thomas standing just outside the corridor of the emergency room at Parkland Hospital, where both Mr. Kennedy and Governor Connolly are under treatment, says that he has been told, that is, Congressman uh, Thomas has been told that the President is, is still alive, but in very critical condition. Is still alive. Mr. Kennedy and Texas Governor Connolly, Connolly reported to be still alive, but in very critical condition in the hospital in Dallas, Texas. And, Don, I think we have a later word on that. We'll switch immediately to Bob Clark in Dallas. We have just received the word here at Parkland Memorial Hospital that President Kennedy is still alive, though in critical condition. Governor Connolly of Texas, who was wounded by one of the other uh, of the three bullets fired at the presidential motorcade, is also alive. His condition is also reported critical. That is the only medical word we have at this moment. Mr. Kennedy has now been at the hospital for close to a half hour. He was taken in uh, to the surgical area on a stretcher. We do not have any information at this moment as to whether he is undergoing surgery. We have this word just received in the ABC newsroom in New York, Bob that uh, a call was sent out immediately as the presidential party arrived at the hospital for all of the top surgical specialists in Dallas. call also went out, naturally, for a Roman Catholic priest. And Congressman Jim Wright of Fort Worth says also that both President Kennedy and Governor Connolly, though seriously injured, are still alive. Now, that adds to the additional information that Bob Clark gave you just a few moments ago, and also to the word of Representative Albert Thomas of Texas, who from just outside the emergency room said both Mr. Kennedy and Mr. Connolly were still alive, but in very critical condition. From Hyannisport, Massachusetts, ABC correspondent Larry Newman reports that the president's mother, Mrs. Rose Kennedy, has been advised that the president has been shot. Mr. Kennedy's father was reported to be taking a nap. A nap. He's not been awakened to be given the sad news about the assassination attempt on the president today. This is ABC News. We're standing by until we have more information. Let me repeat the substance of the general bulletin. President Kennedy and Texas Governor John Connolly were shot from ambush today in a motorcade. At the present time, the best information we have is that both Mr. President, Mr. Kennedy and Texas Governor Connolly are still alive but in very serious condition in the emergency room at the Parkland Memorial Hospital in Dallas, Texas. ABC News standing by for more information. First, a five-second pause for station identification. We will continue to stay on the air to bring you all of the information that we can get from Dallas, Texas. ABC's Bob Clark, traveling with the presidential party, standing by. He's at Parkland Memorial Hospital in Dallas, trying to get all of the information that he possibly can. For those of you who may have tuned in late, here is this, the important bulletin of the hour. President Kennedy and Texas Governor Connolly shot from ambush today while the president's motorcade traveled through Dallas, Texas. At the present moment, we have the information from several sources that both men are still alive but in very critical condition. A call went out from the hospital for all of the top surgical specialists in Dallas. Uh, Congressman Jim Wright of Fort Worth said both Mr. Kennedy and Governor Con Connolly seriously wounded but alive. Representative Albert Thomas of Texas, his uh, word was that both gentlemen are still alive but in very critical condition. And uh, Representative Thomas was standing just outside of the emergency room when he issued that word. The Secret Service says the president remains in the emergency room. 
The governor of Texas has been moved to the general operating room at Parkland Hospital. One Secret Service man was overheard saying to another that there was no need to move the president because emergency facilities were entirely adequate in the emergency room. Let me repeat that. One Secret Service man was heard to say that there was no need to move the president because the facilities in the emergency operating room were sufficient to take care of the president. However, Texas Governor Connolly was moved to the general operating room at the hospital. A priest who had been called to the hospital checked in just moments ago. A second priest also was escorted in just after that. And at the height of the emergency room drama, a woman who was carrying a small but bloody child rushed into the hospital. A nurse and an intern went quickly to her side. Uh, Don, I think we'll have a report shortly from Bob Clark. There's a condition report on the president, uh, expectable in moments, and um, we're standing by. The line to Dallas is open, and uh, we'll have a report shortly. I have some additional information that apparently the ambush attack took place as the president's motorcade was going past an underpass, that there had been some people who saw a man and a woman scrambling on the upper level of a walkway just overlooking the underpass. A presidential aide said that he had no more information about that. Obviously, the Secret Service is in full command of that situation at the moment, but what happened back near the county sheriff's office where the attack took place, we do not know. Mrs. Kennedy apparently is safe. Mrs. Connolly also safe. Both women, however, naturally stunned. And Mr. Kennedy, according to a White House staff member just moments ago, was reported to be alive. And now for another report, let us go to ABC's U.N. correspondent John McVeigh. We've lost that report. Let me repeat the substance of the important <clears throat> bulletin. President Kennedy and Texas Governor John Connolly shot from ambush in the president's motorcade in Dallas, Texas today. The best word we have at the moment is that both men are seriously injured. They are in the operating rooms of Parkland Hospital in Dallas. And at the moment, our best word is that both men, the president and Texas Governor Connolly, are alive. Now for late information... Let us switch now to Washington. Now to ABC Washington. Senator Aiken, what is your immediate reaction to this calamity? I can't believe it, uh, Peter. Just can't believe that uh, President Kennedy has been shot. What uh, will be the first thing that happens now? What happens next, Senator? Well, if the president is dead, of course, Vice President takes office. But we still can't believe it. We're all hoping and praying that it isn't so. How did you hear the news first, Senator Reagan? It came over the wire services all at once a short time ago. Who told you? Everybody. Down on the Senate all, floor. The, all the senators were rushing out into the uh, uh, corridor to the tickers, mm -hmm. and uh, everybody spoke at once. Everybody was shocked, and uh, I think, like myself, it was difficult to believe what we read. What's your own personal feeling about this happening to, to President Kennedy? How do you feel, besides being Oh, I, I feel it's a terrible loss uh, to the country. Uh, President Kennedy and I had been joining offices in the Senate office building for many, many years, and uh, we talked uh, very much about matters concerning the government at that time. But it's still so, uh, we're still also shocked by what has happened that it's difficult to know, to find the words to express ourselves. Thank you very much, Senator Reagan. At present, the United States Senate is in recess, pending developments, as it was put by the majority leader, Senator Mansfield, after he had heard the word of the president's accident. Uh, this is Pete Clapper, ABC, Capitol Hill. Let me repeat the substance of the bulletin. President Kennedy and Texas Governor John Connolly shot from ambush while the president's...
through Dallas, Texas, just a little while ago. At the present moment, both men are in the operating rooms at Parkland Memorial Hospital in Dallas, Texas. Both are reported still alive, but in very serious condition. Vice President Lyndon Johnson also apparently was a victim of the ambush. He walked into the hospital. He was holding his arm as though it had been injured. This still later word. It still isn't known at this moment whether the president is actually in surgery, but a chest surgeon has been called in Dallas, perhaps to examine either the president or Governor Connolly. There have been conflicting reports as to whether the president was struck in the chest or in the head. But AP correspondent Jack Bell did say that he did see blood on Mr. Kennedy at the very moment that Mrs. Kennedy jumped up, grabbed her husband, and then slumped to the back seat along with Mr. Kennedy. Mrs. Connolly did the same thing with the Texas governor. Senator Aiken of Vermont, from Bob, from Pete Clapper in Washington. The Senate has recessed. It's doing so pending developments in the shooting of President Kennedy down in Dallas. ABC Radio will stay on the air until we have the very final word concerning what has happened in the horrible incident down in Dallas, Texas. Up in Hyannis Port, our correspondent there... Larry Newman says that the president's mother, Mrs. Rose Kennedy, has been advised that the president has been shot. Mr. Kennedy's father was taking a nap. He naturally not being awakened to hear the news yet. Now, President Kennedy, from this bulletin from Dallas, was given blood transfusions at the hospital after the assassination attempt today. About a quarter of a million people were lining the streets of Dallas today as the president's motorcade came through. The president had landed at Love Airport just a few moments before the assassination attempt occurred. He was driving to the Dallas Trade Mart to give a speech this afternoon when suddenly three shots rang out and uh, the president slumped to the back of the automobile and Texas Governor Connolly also. Both gentlemen now in surgery at Parkland Hospital in Dallas. Our best reports are both the President and the Texas Governor are alive. Now a report from John McVeigh, the United Nations. The delegates of 111 countries here at the United Nations are in a state of shock and incomprehension. Most of the delegates had stopped their meetings and were about to go to lunch. The news from Dallas... They weren't getting it. Get, get it now. Start right now. Start all over. The delegates from 111 countries are in a state of shock and uncomprehension. Most of the meetings in the United Nations General Assembly had ceased. Delegates were assembling in the big delegates lounge, getting ready for lunch, when the news from Dallas struck the United Nations headquarters and spread like wildfire. Delegates immediately crowded into the few newspaper offices where there are news tickers, uh, got around radios and TV sets, and there are very few in, these, in this set of buildings. Mr. Stevenson said, or let one of his spokesmen say, that he is awaiting a further word before he makes any official statement. President Kennedy is regarded here in this great assembly as the leader of the most powerful country on earth, most of them are going around shaking their heads saying, is it true if it happened, if he really was shot, why? And no foreigner here and no U.S. citizen really knows the answer. For the moment, and of course for some time to come, it appears that all activity here will be halted while the top diplomats, the foreign ministers, the delegates of the 111 member countries of the United Nations wait for word from Dallas. This is John McVeigh at the United Nations. And to add to John McVeigh's report, the bare details that we have at the moment, 
that President Kennedy was shot by an assassin today while he went through Dallas, Texas in his motorcade, accompanying the president in his bubble-top limousine, Texas Governor John Connolly. He also was shot. At the moment, both the president and the Texas governor are in surgery at Parkland Hospital in Dallas, Texas. We have word that both are still alive. Both the president and the Texas governor are still alive. Those words coming to us from Bob Clark, who is at Parkland Hospital. He's been traveling with the president's motorcade on his two-day travels through Texas. Also, this word that the president is still alive but in very critical condition from Congressman Albert Thomas of Texas. And a Secret Service man also said that both the president and the governor were still alive. And Congressman Jim Wright of Fort Worth at the hospital said that both Mr. Kennedy and Governor Connolly, while seriously wounded, were still alive. We're staying on the air to bring you up to the moment on all of the information that may happen in Dallas, Texas. The president was given blood transfusions today. A call went out for the top medical specialists in Dallas, one of those being a chest surgeon who is called. Naturally, priests were also called to the Parkland Hospital. Dallas is regarded as a center of strong political opposition to Mr. Kennedy. A quarter of a million people turning out at the field and all along the streets of Dallas. They seem to be overwhelmingly friendly. There were numerous welcome Kennedy signs, but as Bob Clark reported to us from Dallas just a few moments ago, there were some anti-Kennedy signs there. Now, in just, just a few moments, we'll have some more information. Right now, though, I would like to bring to you ABC's player reporter, Stuart Klein, who has just come up from talking to people out on the streets of New York City. Stu. Don, I've just come back uh, from off the street here to ABC. And in New York, the nation's largest city, the scene was the same as it was in every village and hamlet, I suppose, across America. People stopped and stared and couldn't believe what they had just heard. The President of the United States had been shot. It couldn't be true, but it was. The radio had just said it, said it, and suddenly there were newscasters speaking instead of music. I got the news while finishing a sandwich and coffee at McGlade's Bar at 67th Street and Columbus Avenue in New York City. What happened there probably happened the same way in every public place in the country. It was the lunch hour, and plates clattered in the general hubbub of conversation. Then suddenly, the radio and back of bartender Mike Riley was turned up full blast. For the first few seconds, only Mike the bartender and a truck driver sitting next to the radio at the bar knew what happened. The President of the United States had been shot by an assassin's bullet. What happened, people wanted to know. Some secretaries from an insurance company sat up in a back booth and looked at the radio. Suddenly, all was quiet, and the only voice in McGlade's was that of the radio newscaster. The President of the United States had just been shot. The extent of his injuries was as yet unknown. At the bar, a well-dressed woman carrying a briefcase began to cry softly. So did a man in overalls. The radio kept repeating the same message. I ran out of the bar and ran the two blocks to the ABC studios. Many on the street were not aware of what had happened, but many others did know. You could tell it the way the cars suddenly pulled over to the curb, the radios blaring. The proprietor of a delicatessen came out of his shop and onto the street wearing his apron, asking me if it were true. I said I had heard the same thing that he did, but he said he just wanted to talk to somebody to make sure. People came out on a 66th Street, and suddenly, everywhere, there seemed to be radios out on the street, all with the same story. The President of the United States had just been shot. That's the way it was outside, Don. Thank you, Stu. ABC's player reporter, Stuart Klein, with observations on what's happening on the streets of New York City. Nick George. Don, uh, the president, as you know, was a longtime member of the Senate. For a report on what happened on the Senate floor, when the news reached the Senate floor, we switch to ABC's Pete Clapper in Washington. Come in, Pete Clapper. Come in, Pete Clapper in Washington. At the time when the calamitous news of the president's having been shot broke, I happened to be in the Senate gallery watching a dull exchange 
a debate between Senator Morse and uh, Senator Randolph, both Democrats, on the uh, federal funds for state libraries. Suddenly, Richard Riddell, an elderly gentleman, head of the Senate pages, a man who never runs, ran into the Senate. He went straight to Majority Leader Mansfield, who was standing beside Senator Morse. He whispered something urgent in his ear. Senator Mansfield looked stunned. Riddell moved over across the aisle to Minority Leader Dirksen, whispered the same urgent news at him. He was seated. Dirksen remained seated in stunned silence. And then Riddell looked behind him, saw seated in the, uh, the uh, presiding officer's chair none other than the brother of President Kennedy. Well, he raced up, of course, to Senator Kennedy and whispered the terrible news to him. Uh, at that point, pandemonium broke loose. Uh, senators gathered in knots on the floor to discuss the news, which was then uh, pretty vague. The uh, a majority leader called for a recess pending developments, as he put it. Uh, I left the the uh, Senate gallery. I ran down to the majority leader's office. Uh, there I was unable to find uh, Majority Leader Mansfield, who was uh, on a hotline to the White House trying for more news. I did, however, uh, talk to Senator Aiken and managed to uh, uh, discuss this terrible thing with him. Uh, then we went out to the Senate floor and discussed it with a number of senators, who some of whom would not even comment. Senator Hart of Michigan, too stunned to say anything, absolutely refused, tears in his eyes. Senator Carlson, Republican from Kansas, said nothing could be worse. Senator Still stood on the Senate floor, stunned in little huddles. It was probably the worst, most stunned episode in the Senate, perhaps in our lifetimes. This is Pete Clapper, ABC, Capitol Hill. Bob Clark is standing by down in Dallas, Texas. He's at the Parkland Hospital and will give us some uh, information uh, just in a moment. We have a bit of information that Texas now says that the president is dead. That is only an unconfirmed report. We have only an unconfirmed report. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a moment trying for all of us. Let us pause and let us all pray. Ladies and gentlemen, President Kennedy and Texas Governor John Connolly shot by an assassin today in Dallas, Texas. We do not know officially at this moment as to whether the president is alive or dead. There are conflicting reports. This latest bulletin just off the Associated Press in Dallas says the president was given the last holy rites of the Roman Catholic Church today after the assassin shot him down. A Catholic priest who performed the last rites said he did not believe that the president was dead. The priest said he did not believe that the president was dead. Don, let me say here, we've had trouble with our line to Dallas, but Bob Clark, who is at Parkland Hospital in Dallas, says that there is no official word that the president has died. There has been no report to that effect in the news area of Parkland Hospital. However, uh, there have been reports um, to that effect, but the best we know at this moment is that the president is very critically wounded that he has been given the last rites of the Roman Catholic Church. However, we have no official word that he is dead. There are conflicting reports. You are right, Nick George. We can stay on the air here at ABC Radio and will until we have the definite information, and we trust that it will be very joyous when the flash comes to us, that all is well, but at the moment, both President Kennedy and Texas Governor Connolly are seriously injured. They are both in surgery Blood transfusion material has been rushed to both of the emergency rooms. After the shooting took place, sheriff's officers did grab a young man, took him into custody at the scene. They are now questioning him. And I would also like to add this information. The New York Stock Exchanges, the New York Stock Exchange and the American Exchange closed early today a few minutes after 2 o'clock because of the shooting of President Kennedy. 
In addition, may I say that the Dow Jones Industrial Average did not take a big drop, did not take a big drop after the shooting of President Kennedy, but the exchanges are now closed. Let me repeat the gist of the information we have at this moment. President Kennedy has been given blood transfusions in an effort to save his life after he and Texas Governor Connolly were shot as they rode on the outskirts of Dallas in a motorcade today. Hospital officials said they had given the president a transfusion of blood from their bank and were calling for new supplies of the same type. Secret Service agents escorted Mrs. Lyndon Johnson into the emergency room where the president lay. Police said they did not know whether the vice president was in that room. When the vice president, Lyndon Johnson, entered the hospital, he was walking but holding his arm as though he too might have been injured. Radio New York is bringing you complete coverage of this assassination attempt on President Kennedy. And now for those in our audience of the Spanish language, we present late news on this subject from Radio New York Worldwide Spanish News Service. Tito Ariagada reporting. A las 12 y 34 minutos de esta tarde se escuchó la noticia en un flash que llegó a Radio Nueva York. El presidente Kennedy había sido herido en los instantes en que viajaba en un automóvil descubierto por las calles de Dallas en el estado de Texas en compañía de su esposa y del gobernador de ese estado, John Connolly. El presidente Kennedy fue herido, inmediatamente fue llevado a un hospital, se encuentra en estos instantes en el hospital de Dallas y según últimos informes se le administraron los últimos sacramentos y aparentemente su condición es grave. Todos los informes que se están recibiendo desde Dallas indican que se está haciendo grandes esfuerzos para capturar a los asesinos o los que intentaron el asesinato y la situación está en completa confusión en este instante. La noticia ha causado sensación naturalmente en todo el país y hasta la bolsa de valores de Nueva York cerró inmediatamente sus operaciones del día y el mundo entero se encuentra ahora pegado a las radios de, y, y televisoras esperando más detalles. El temor es de que el presidente pueda haber sido mortalmente herido y la noticia se encuentra en el ánimo de todo el mundo. The latest in news from the subject in Washington and in Dallas, Texas, the assassination attempt on President Kennedy from Radio New York's Spanish language service for Latin America. We will keep our listeners informed in both languages as news develops. We are at a very critical time now, not knowing one way or another what the condition of the President and the Governor of Texas are, nor whether or not uh, the conditions of either are terminal or optimistic. The reporting that you've been hearing from the ABC radio network and from other sources, uh, which we have indicated at times has been unconfirmed, has brought conflicting reports. Some have said that President Kennedy is alive in critical condition at the Parkland Hospital in Dallas, Texas. Others, as we reported via the CBS reports we received in our newsroom, said that the president was dead. There was no further word at this hour uh, as to what the actual condition of the president was. Actually, there has been no official statement of any kind kind at this time. We have been uh, given the information throughout, and now we have again, we're standing by for Bob Clark in Dallas, so let's go to Parkland Hospital, Dallas, Texas. There is still no official word here at Parkland Memorial Hospital on the condition of President Kennedy. Mr. Kennedy has now been in the emergency ward of the hospital for some 45 minutes. He was given last rites a few minutes ago by a Roman Catholic priest that the priest said at that time the president was alive, though critically wounded. Governor Conley, who was also shot by one of the three bullets fired by the assassin, uh, went into surgery about 20 minutes ago, as far as is known, is still in surgery at this moment. His condition is described as critical, though this too is unofficial. Here is a flash from Associated Press. Two priests who were with Mr. Kennedy say he is dead of bullet wounds. This is a flash from Associated Press in Dallas. Two priests who were with Mr. Kennedy say he is dead of bullet wounds. This is not an official declaration, but only the statement that comes now from two priests who were with Mr. Kennedy say that the president is dead of the bullet wounds received in the assassination today in Dallas, Texas.
ABC Radio will bring you all of the information. We'll let us stay with this story until we find out for sure what the official word is down in Dallas, Texas. There are conflicting reports. At one moment it is one way, at another moment it is another way. Until we can get official word, we will stay on the air. An assistant to Governor Connolly said he talked to the Texas governor in the operating room. The Texas governor was injured too, so apparently was Vice President Lyndon Johnson in the assassination attempt in Dallas today. Another bulletin from Associated Press in Dallas. Two priests stepped out of Parkland's hospital emergency ward today and said that President Kennedy died of his bullet wounds. This is an additional flash from Associated Press that two priests who came out of the Parkland Hospital Emergency Ward said that the president was dead of his bullet wounds. The priests had been called, as would be a normal circumstance, to offer the last rites of the Roman Catholic Church to the president as he lay in the emergency ward at Parkland Hospital in Dallas, Texas. This is not an official statement. We can only go on what it says here at the moment from Associated Press that two priests who came out of the Parkland Hospital Emergency Ward in Dallas said that the president was dead of his bullet wounds. But again, may I repeat, we do not have an official confirmation. Go ahead, Washington. Go ahead, ABC Washington. Richard Riddell, the press liaison for the Senate. He was the man who broke the news on the Senate floor. Uh, Mr. Riddell, what happened? Pete, it was one of the most shocking and moving uh, events in the 45 years I have been here, since I was nine years old, when I began as a page. Uh, I first learned of the tragedy, the assassination of President Kennedy, when my, one of my assistants, Tom Pelican, rushed out. The President of the United States, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, is dead. The President is dead. Let us pray.